Hey, welcome to Lake to Lake. I'm Chuck, my wife's Carrie. Got a couple dogs, Mocha and Harper, they're elderly. And we're gonna to talk to you today about, or we, I'm gonna to talk to you today about fall camping. The pros, the cons, the A's and A's, what we do, what we don't do. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm gonna start out with, we always carry an extra tank of propane. So we had two come on the rig and I keep one in the truck as a just in case. The other thing about fall camping is the colors. The trees are absolutely beautiful in the Midwest. It's, I can't describe it. I'll, you can check the pictures out. It's just absolutely beautiful. And they're changing colors. So you can be out one, one weekend and the next weekend, everything changes. Now, now you can walk on trails and the, the, the brush is dying down, the leaves are falling, the leaves are changing. You see more things now when you walk the trails than you did in the middle of the summer when it's hot. The other thing, the weather's not so hot. You know, you don't have to worry about just picking, about getting a campsite um, like you do in the summertime when it's hot. In the summertime, you got, you, got, you got two priorities. Number one, can you get a campsite? Number two, is it in the shade? And uh, our rig, the air conditioner keeps the rig cool, so it's not so much keeping the rig cool, but it's when you're outside. You know, we like to spend all our time outside. We don't like to spend much time inside, but when it's 100 degrees out and you're out there, you know, trying to do something outside, it, it's hot. And you got to come inside and take a cool shower to cool off at night. Uh, in the fall, you don't have to do that. You, you don't have to worry about the spot. You don't have to worry about it being in the shade. You, you can t take almost any, any, any camp spots, okay. And the other thing, generally speaking, no, I shouldn't say generally. It's less crowded. When I go out to state campgrounds and look for a spot on the weekends or during the week, especially on the weekends, they're only half full. And I, I don't really understand why. I mean, kids in school and whatnot, yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. But uh, you, you can pick a camp spot. It's not as critical that you get in the shade in the fall. And since there's only half the people, you can do things a lot quicker. Uh, you know, like when you're leaving, you don't, there's no line at the dump station to dump your tanks. At the Corps of Engineers, where we go, and I, I kind of like the Corps of Engineers better because I think they have a little better facilities, uh, there's even less people there. And the only reason I can figure that is why there's less people at the core sites is the fact that um, there's a little less activities to do than they have at the uh, state sites here in, in the Midwest. And, and I will say that there are some activities going on, and they, they seem to cater to the stateside um, little town we're not too far from they have a brew fest the brew club goes out there and holds a three-day event where you know you buy a you buy a glass for you know whatever and you get it and they're, they're little glasses so you get to taste all the different beers everybody comes that's something there's a lot of horse riding events. Uh, people with horses get together and go on trail rides and have bonfires and have get-togethers uh, the other thing is there's no bugs i don't have to pour, put bug spray on me we don't have mosquitoes. We don't have the no see -em bugs. Uh, we don't seem to have the spiders and the spider webs on like we do in the summertime. So there's less bugs, no bug spray. She can't beat that. I just don't like putting bug spray on my skin. But anyway, one of the other uh, things that we do when we go camping is we bring an electric, small electric heater. And I'll show that to you guys. We, we bring the small electric heater and we use it to keep our rig warm uh, it, and we've it's got down in the in the mid 30s and that little heater keeps our our grand design travel trailer warm we haven't had any problem with it keeping it warm and that way you save money uh, you don't use your propane that you buy you use the campgrounds electricity this is the little heater we use to keep our rig warm uh, it keeps us from turning on the propane it's just a little cheap heater. It you know tip over it goes off like all of them. It's got a, it's got a two stages, and you can control each stage or what on the stage how how often it comes on and off. And it works, keeps the place warm. Uh, and it's all we need. Save on propane. It's got a little electric heater. And again, I do carry an extra propane tank, so I got two on the rig and one in the truck. As you know from one of my previous videos, I did have a line break and lost all the propane out of one tank during one camping trip. So, not that it impacted me at all, but you know what? 
I'd rather have an extra propane tank sitting in the back of the truck and be warm than having I, I have one of those I told you so's from from the boss if you know what I mean um, the other thing is uh, fishing now we live on a little lake in in Kansas a little city lake and uh, um, we do fish we have a little boat and uh, that's kind of where our name came from we live on a lake a small lake and generally when we go camping we go to another lake that's how come we came up with the name lake to lake so we start out at a lake we go camping on a lake therefore lake to lake but anyway fishing we found or I found that fishing when it's cool especially especially in the fall is awesome on our little lake that we live on I would catch more fish in the fall uh, when we go out to the state lakes, fishing is much easier, or I should, fishing is much better. We catch more fish. It's not as hot. You're not hot and sweaty. It's more comfortable, and it, it, fishing is better. So if you're a fisherman, go in the fall. That's the best time to fish. The other thing is um, there's other activities like orchards. Around here, you can go pick apples. You pick the apples, you put them in a, in a bushel basket, you take them up, you weigh them, you pay X amount of dollars. But it's an activity, and it's a learning activity, especially when we take our grandson. He, he, he gets a ball, out of, a ball out of doing stuff like that. I mean, he goes out there, he's picking apples, they're teaching him how apples grow, how they prune the trees, how to know when the apples are ripe, and he just loves it. And of course, when you're there, they always have a little market there, so you can get apple cider, you can buy apples from them, they make applesauce, you can buy knickknacks or whatnot. And uh, also around here, all these small towns have fall festivals. And uh, generally they get the high school involved, they get, they get booths set up where they're selling, local people sell their foods, you know, the, the street tacos, the um, drinks, the crafts, the knickknacks. And it's a big deal for these small towns, you know, when the small town's marching band comes marching down the main street, it's a big deal. And, and it's cheap and it's fun entertainment. You can go and walk through that span, walk through one of the fall festivals and not spend any money and, and spend two or three hours. Uh, and you get, you know, it, it just is what it is. So anyway, uh, that's our fall camping guide tips that we do. Uh, we appreciate you watching the video. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. And uh, if you like what you're seeing and want to see more of them, please subscribe. And we'll see you, hopefully we'll see you around the campfire. Until next time, bye-bye, folks.